What's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is a PC centric rig and this means it's a recipe for the best rig you can get at a certain price point. And this price point is all about the next gen consoles. Now it's not going to cost the same, it is going to cost slightly more than buying say an Xbox One or a Playstation 4 but it is going to save you money in the long run as well as giving you access to great PC titles at realistically better than next gen console quality. Now all the UK prices are from Scan International and all the US prices are from Newegg. So without further ado let's get started on the best budget PC rig. Now to get us started we'll start with the processor and we've gone with the AMD FX6300 processor. So why have I gone for this one? Well this processor is going to deliver plenty of performance for your games as well as your general PC use. As this is a budget system, it's not going to perform as well as, say, like the i5 would in a higher spec rig, but that's not the point in this system. This processor is better than what you're going to get in the next gen consoles, and it's going to last you for quite a few years to come. Now, the 970A motherboard from Gigabyte is the one I've gone for in this rig. Why have I gone for that motherboard? Well, plainly because it's very, very well priced, it performs well, and it's got six SATA ports, these are SATA 3 ports. And of course it supports Crossfire X, which at this price point is really, really good. And for a budget rig, you're really not going to need anything else at all. One of the nice little features of it is that if your PC is off, it's still going to charge up all your devices through the USB, which is a nice little touch that not all budget boards have. Now next up is the case, and of course this is a personal choice, so I do expect you to have a look at a few others. But without a doubt, the one I would go for at this price point is the Corsair 200R case. Now, when you're getting a cheaper case, unfortunately they do cut a lot of corners, but Corsair have cut the right corners and the quality is brilliant of the case. Um, it looks great as well for a budget case and it's going to be easy and roomy to build inside without you having to do fiddly things and not have enough room for stuff just because it's on the cheap side. So without a doubt, this Corsair case is the quality case that you expect, but at a budget price. Now, moving on to the RAM. Now, this was the hardest component to actually choose for this rig because you can get 4 gigabytes of it for around £32 and 8 gigabytes of it is pretty much double that at £64. Now moving on to RAM and this was the hardest component to actually put in this machine. Now that's because RAM has recently become incredibly expensive and it's one of the most expensive things that's actually gone into this machine. Now 4 gigabytes of RAM is not enough. I wouldn't want you to go and buy 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now 8 gigabytes is double the price of 4 gigabytes. It doesn't save you any money buying 8 gigabytes. So if you wanted to cut a few corners, you could get a 4 gigabyte module, stick it in, and then if you needed to, you could upgrade to 8 gigabytes later. But I personally would just go with the 8 gigabytes now. It is a little bit more expensive, but the next gen consoles have got them as well, for example. I think you're definitely going to need 8 gigabytes of RAM in your rig. So I've put 8 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM in this machine. Now as for the graphics card, this was actually quite an easy decision. This is the AMD Radeon 270X. Brilliant little card, it performs really really well for example. Um, in Battlefield 3, obviously it's not Battlefield 4, but in Battlefield 3 at ultra quality with 4 times MSAA, it averages out at just over 50 frames a second which is fantastic. Obviously it's not going to be that much in Battlefield 4, but for a card at £150 that's absolutely brilliant price and you're going to get loads of performance out of it and as it's a gaming machine you're going to need a graphics card that's going to play games well and this does it without a shadow of a doubt and it does it at a great price point and I can really recommend you go for the 270X. Now as for the power supply I've gone for a 550 watt from XFX, it's the Pro Edition and it's even bronze rated for efficiency so it's going to save you a little bit of money but not much. Um, on your bills as well and it's going to power the rig absolutely fine. It's not modular but this is a budget rig and um, this is pretty much the perfect power supply for your needs. Now, as for the hard drive I would go with the Western Digital Blue Drive. It's pretty much a budget drive. It performs not quite as well as the black drive does but it's considerably less money and it actually makes less noise as well and we're not going to put an SSD in this rig but there's a one terabyte edition and it doesn't cost very much, it's under £50. That shadow of a doubt, I put this in the rig. It's all you need, it's a hard drive. Now of course the last thing you're going to need is a copy of Windows. And I've gone for Windows 8.1. Many of you will complain about that, but as I've said in other videos, Windows 8, especially Windows 8.1, is a great operating system and it's the one you should be going for. 7 is available if you really want 7, but I personally would go with Windows 8.1. SteamOS isn't quite there yet and I'll bring you a few more videos on 
why that is and some other stuff about that soon but don't worry about anything you've got to get Windows um, there's not really any other option for a gaming PC at least at the moment. Now there's a few other things I haven't included and they are optional extras if you want and that is a DVD drive, they're not very expensive, they're about £15, $15, you know, not very much. But you don't need one unless you're going to buy physical games, you don't need one. Most of the games you're going to buy through Steam and other outlets anyway, but it's not very much money so if you think you're going to use a DVD drive, by all means get a DVD drive, but I haven't put it in the rig. Um, if you've got a little bit extra money to spend, definitely get an SSD, but it's not on the budget side, it will absolutely change your computer but it's not on the budget side, so it's left out of this rig. Um, and lastly, of course, there is the sound card. If you're going to get a decent set of cans or a decent set of speakers, then you are literally going to want to get a sound card just because it's actually going to get the most out of what you've got. And a sound card will have a headphone amplifier as well, so if you're going to use headphones, um, you're, actually going to be get, you're actually going to be able to get the volume levels you want because you need the amplifier um, that the motherboard doesn't actually have. So how much does this whole thing cost? Well, as I said earlier, it's more expensive than both consoles and it comes to £576 and in the US that's $794. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's considerably more than both next-gen consoles and that's right. But the point of this rig is not to be the lowest of the low. You can get cheaper components, some are okay, some are not, but this is the lowest I'd recommend. It's one that you're going to be quite happy to be using for years to come and if you cut corners on slightly cheaper components you're only going to uh, miss them later. Definitely stuff like the graphics card and processor I wouldn't advise going any lower. And the rest of the stuff um, you can buy not as good brands but again um, to avoid problems later this is the lowest I would recommend. And of course the money that you've spent gets you a PC rather than a games console. Um, it produces games that are going to be better quality than that you get on the PS4 and the Xbox One. And the games are way cheaper, and that's not even including Steam sales. The RRP is less because you're not playing stupid, stupid license fees. And of course you get access to loads of free-to-play titles and other PC-exclusive titles that you wouldn't on the next-gen consoles. And the next-gen consoles don't actually have many games at the moment anyway. So this has been the PC-centric budget rig. As always, leave a comment below on what you'd change, you know, if there's something you think should be in there or shouldn't be in there or you can cut corners on. By all means, let us know. This is a discussion. This is just what I think. What do you think? Don't forget to like the video if you like it, or dislike it if you dislike it. And why not subscribe to PC Centric for more videos like this. And as I said, there's plenty of other good stuff to come. I need to talk about Steam OS, and I need to talk about it soon. If you're watching this fairly soon, then have a great Christmas. Um, but I imagine the majority of you watch this after Christmas, so I hope you had a good Christmas. Um, if it's near Christmas when you're watching this in a few years' time, have a good Christmas. Happy birthday. Good to see you. See you next time.